In the last lecture, we understood the steps involved in analyzing a recursive algorithm. There are a total of three steps in order to analyze an algorithm. Step number one is to write the recurrence relation of the recursive algorithm. Step number two is to solve the recurrence relation. And step number three is to represent the result of the recurrence relation using the asymptotic notation. We have already completed step number one. We learned how to write the recurrence relation of the recursive algorithm in the last lecture. We took an example of the factorial of n and we learned in the last lecture how to write the recurrence relation of time of factorial of n. Now in this lecture, we will learn how to solve that recurrence relation of time using substitution method. This is one of the methods available to us and this method allows us to solve the recurrence relation of time which we have obtained in the last lecture. So this lecture is in the continuation to the previous lecture. I am assuming you have already watched the previous lecture. If not, then please watch the previous lecture before moving on to this lecture. So now let's proceed and let's see what are the topics. The topic of this lecture is solving the recurrence relation of time using substitution method. This means we will cover step number two, that is to solve the recurrence relation. And not only this, we will also cover step number three. This means we will learn how to represent the result of the recurrence relation by using the asymptotic notation. So first, we will complete step number two and then we will complete step number three. Let's see those steps once again. These are the steps involved in order to analyze recursive algorithms. Step number one is to write the recurrence relation of the algorithm, precisely the recursive algorithm. Step number two is to solve the recurrence relation. And step number three is to represent the result of the recurrence relation using the asymptotic notation. We have completed step number one in the previous lecture. Now we will complete these two steps in this lecture. So let's proceed and let's learn how to solve the recurrence relation of time of factorial function and that too using the substitution method. This is the recursive algorithm to calculate factorial of n and this is the recurrence relation of this algorithm. Tn equal to Tn minus 1 plus c if n is greater than 1 tn equal to c if n is equal to 1. Now, our job is to solve this recurrence relation using the substitution method. According to this method, we need to start from the recursive case. That is, we need to start from tn equal to tn minus 1 plus c. So, let's write this here. tn equal to tn minus 1 plus c. Now, we need to solve this mathematical expression using the substitution method. So, let's do this now. We have Tn equal to Tn minus 1 plus C. Here we can observe that Tn minus 1 can be replaced by Tn minus 2 plus C because we can replace N by N minus 1. Here we will get N minus 2 because of this reason and therefore we will get Tn minus 1 equal to Tn minus 2 plus C. So, we can replace or substitute Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus C. This is the reason why this method is called substitution method. We are substituting Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus C. So we will get Tn equal to Tn minus 2 plus C plus C. I have substituted Tn minus 1 by Tn minus 2 plus C. Within brackets, I have mentioned this and I have written plus C as it is after this. This is the value of Tn. So, Tn is equal to Tn minus 2 plus C plus C. C plus C can be written as 2 times C. So, we can rewrite this expression as Tn minus 2 plus 2 times C. So, Tn at this moment is equal to Tn minus 2 plus 2 times C. This means we can write Tn in terms of Tn minus 2 like this. 
Now, in the same way, we can substitute Tn minus 2 by Tn minus 3 plus C in the same way we did for Tn minus 1. So, now let's replace Tn minus 2 by Tn minus 3 plus C. This is what we got. Tn minus 3 plus C plus 2C. I have written plus 2C as it is. So, Tn is equal to Tn minus 3 plus C plus 2C. We can rewrite this expression as Tn minus 3 plus 3C because 2C plus C is 3C. So, we will get Tn minus 3 plus 3 times C. Here we can observe a pattern. We have Tn equal to Tn minus 1 plus C in the first iteration. Then we have Tn equal to Tn minus 2 plus 2C. Then we have Tn equal to Tn minus 3 plus 3C. So, we can continue in this way and we can write Tn as Tn minus k plus k times c. Here I am assuming some k and if we have k here, then we must have k here as well. Because as we can observe, if we have 3 here, then we have 3 here as well. If we have 2 here, then we have 2 here as well. If we have 1 here, then we have 1 here as well. Similarly, if we have k here, then we have k here as well. So, Tn can be written as Tn minus k plus k times c. Now, what are we doing here exactly? If we observe, here we have T of n equal to T of n minus 1 plus some constant. This means time required to solve fact of n or time required to solve factorial of n is same as time required to solve fact of n minus 1 plus some constant. So, T of n depends on T of n minus 1 plus some constant. What about T of n minus 1? We have replaced T of n minus 1 by T of n minus 2 plus constant here. This means in order to find the time to solve fact of n minus 1, we need to find the time required to solve fact of n minus 2. So, T of n minus 1 is same as T of n minus 2 plus some constant. Similarly, T of n minus 2 is same as T of n minus 3 plus some constant. We can proceed in this way and let's assume that T of n minus k is the time required to solve fact of n minus k or factorial of n minus k. This is from the assumption that T of n represents the time required to solve factorial of n. So, T of n minus k must be the time required to solve factorial of n minus k. Let us assume that fact of n minus k is the last recursive call and therefore, the base case must be satisfied. Remember what's the base case? According to the base case, if n is equal to 1, then we will return 1. So, this means t of 1 must be equal to constant. If we are saying that t of n minus k is the time required to solve the last recursive call, which is fact of n minus k, then n minus k must be equal to 1 in order to make this t of 1. We want to satisfy the base case and for this we need to assume n minus k must be equal to 1. So, I am assuming here n minus k is equal to 1, therefore k is equal to n minus 1. So, we can replace k by n minus 1 here. This is what we are getting. We are replacing this k by n minus 1 here and we are replacing this k also by n minus 1. So, we are getting Tn equal to Tn minus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 times c. What is n minus n minus 1? We will get n minus n plus 1, which is equal to 1. So, we are getting T of 1 here and that's what we want. At this point, we can observe that n is equal to 1. So, from T of n minus 1, we have approached to T of 1. This means we have approached the base case. And if base case is satisfied, that is if n is equal to 1, then we know 
return one will be executed and this will take constant amount of time therefore t of 1 is equal to capital c so we can replace this by capital c and now we have c plus n minus 1 times c so at this moment we can observe tn is equal to c plus n minus 1 times c now we can expand this this will become n times c or c times n minus c here we have c and here we have minus c we can cancel these two terms and we will be left with c times n so tn is equal to c times n this is the final expression so obtained so in this way we have solved this recurrence relation using the substitution method let's recall what we have done so far we have started with tn equal to tn minus 1 plus c then we have replaced tn minus 1 by tn minus 2 plus c because we know the time required to solve fact of n minus 1 is same as the time required to solve fact of n minus 2 plus some constant so we have replaced tn minus 1 by tn minus 2 plus c and we have written plus c as it is so tn is same as t of n minus 2 plus 2 times c in the same way tn is also same as t of n minus 3 plus 3 times c and in this way if we proceed then we can say that tn is equal to t of n minus k plus k times c i am assuming that fact of n minus k is the last recursive call if fact of n minus k is the last recursive call then n minus k must be equal to 1 in order to satisfy the base case at this moment the base case must be satisfied because this is our assumption that t of n minus k is the time required to solve the last recursive call which is fact of n minus k so n minus k must be equal to 1 if it is equal to 1 then we will get k as n minus 1 so we can replace this k by n minus 1 and this k by n minus 1 we will get t of 1 here and n minus 1 times c here so tn is equal to t1 plus n minus 1 times c and what is t1 we know if n is equal to 1 then we will get t1 here and t1 is equal to c so we can replace t1 by c so we will get the expression c plus n minus 1 times c and what is c plus n minus 1 times c it is equal to c times n so tn is c times n so in this way we can use the substitution method to solve the recurrence relation that we have now we know how to solve the recurrence relation we are done with step number two let's move to step number three where we will learn how to represent the recurrence relation or the result of the recurrence relation using the asymptotic notation this is step number three representing the recurrence relation now here we got tn equal to c times n what is c times n we can write this in asymptotic notation as well this is c times n and it is same as big o of n so the worst case time complexity to solve the recursive algorithm for finding the factorial of n is big o of n so we have represented time in terms of asymptotic notation and this is our time complexity so the time required to solve the factorial of n is big o of n in this way we have analyzed our algorithm for finding factorial of a number so we have completed all the three steps and hence we are done with this topic solving the recurrence relation of time using substitution method we have learned how to solve the recurrence relation of time of factorial of n using substitution method and finally we have represented the result using asymptotic notation so with this we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one